Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. <clears throat> okay, we're turning to 2 Timothy 3.16. We're going to hold that scripture and come back to it here in just a second. Kind of explain where we're coming from tonight. Uh, as most of you know, I was raised Southern Baptist. I go all the way back to First Baptist Church and did North Carolina. I did before that Bill's Hole Baptist Church. So I was just, I was raised Baptist all the way up. Bob and Dad worked at a Baptist orphanage and Baptists have their own traditions. They have their own, you know, things that they do and believe in. And one of the things that I heard growing up was a saying that we want to talk about tonight. The saying was, and you may have heard even Brother Hagin has quoted this, having been raised Baptist. God said it, I believe it, that settles it. And uh, that was a t-shirt I saw. It was a bumper sticker. So I thought we'd do a, a bumper sticker Bible study, <laughs> which I don't want to say that too many times fast because that's hard to say, to try to say it fast. But uh, I was meditating on that one day. God said it. I believe it. That settles it. And whoever wrote that or whoever came up with that, uh, you know, their heart was in the right place, no question. Absolutely. However, it's not exactly scriptural. Just not exactly. So we're going we're gonna to scripturalize it. Uh, because after all, God said it, so that settles it. <laughs> you know, whether you believe it or not, it's up to you. But uh, and it, it behooves you to believe it. But because he said it, it's settled. All right? So if you rearrange it, it actually is more scriptural. But we're going to go even further than that. Let's start out and look at God said it to start off with. 2 Timothy 3.16 All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Now what we may miss read that is, is that where it says by inspiration of God, that is actually a Greek word, which I love Greek words. I'm going to give it a shot pronouncing this one. Theoptdustos. <laughs> and it literally means divinely breathed by God. So the word of God is breathed out of God's own mouth. Well, you know, if you speak and you hold your hand up in front of your, your mouth, you'll feel breath. So God breathed it. He spoke it. His word is actually spoken out of his own mouth. Now, it goes on to say it's profitable for doctrine, that's teaching, for reproof, correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect. The word perfect there, of course, we know means mature. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So the word of God is powerful, and it is given to us for these specific reasons. But the key that I wanted us to see here is that every word that we have in the Scripture, every word of God, he spoke out of his own mouth. Well, what do we know about God speaking words? <laughs> There's power behind that. He said, light be, and light was. So, I mean, if he speaks the word, then there's power there. So let's go on and, uh, uh, to the next point. That settles it. Psalm 119.89. I'm going to go over there electronically here in my electronic Bible. Psalm 119, of course, is the... Psalm that talks about the word specifically. At 89. Says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. So God said it, that settles it. It is settled in heaven. Now the word settled here is a Hebrew word which means to be stationed, to be uh, appointed to be settled or sharpened or established. So, pretty powerful there. God said it, so that settles it. It's settled forever. I mean, 
forever is a long time. <laughs> you know, you look at it that way, forever goes on a long, long time. So let's go down to uh, 1 Thessalonians 2.13. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. We're going to talk about the fact that I believe it. So I believe it is your choice. See, God saying it makes it true. Jesus said, John 17, 17, thy word is truth. So it's true, it's settled, it's established, but whether we believe it or not is our choice. Now, as I said, it behooves you to believe it, but it's a choice we make. So, 13, for this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when you receive the word of God, which you heard of us, so they received the word they heard. You received it not as the word of men, but as in truth the word of God, which effectively worketh also in you that believe. So we believe it after having heard it. Now we know Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So when we hear the word preached, faith comes for us to believe it. Now if we choose to believe it, then something happens. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13. Another familiar verse of Scripture. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, therefore what? I have spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. So we hear the word, we receive the word, we believe the word, and because we believe it, we speak the word. So we're getting a little deeper into our study now. So let's add a, a line here. God said it. That settles it. I believe it, therefore I speak it. <laughs> because when you believe the word, you're going to speak the word. Matter of fact, really, if you think about it, you're always going to say what it is you believe. People, even if they believe something incorrect, totally wrong, they're going to say it. And they're going to go out and preach it. They're going to go out and talk about it. We just tend to speak what we believe. That's really a spiritual principle. Now, the key thing about us is, as believers, is we believe the word. We hear the word. Faith comes. We believe it. Therefore, we speak it. What happens when we speak it? Well, we're going to add another line. The next slide is, and it comes to pass in my life. Okay, so now we've got a little bit more than we could put on a bumper sticker. <laughs> God said it, that settles it, I believe it, therefore I speak it, and it comes to pass in my life. That's a very big bumper sticker. It'd actually be a lot on a t-shirt, you know, come think of it. Unless you went to the front, then went around to the back. But at any rate... <laughs> It comes to pass your life, but let's go to a scripture that establishes that. Let's go to Mark 11. Good old Mark 11. That's the one Brother Hagin wrote. Well, no, he didn't, but that's okay. <laughs> Mark 11:22. Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say... There's a say, unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that whatsoever things he saith, there's another say, it shall come to pass, uh, shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Okay, so it comes to pass in my life, it comes to pass. Now notice, he'll have whatsoever he saith. That implies future. Now, it doesn't have to be very long in the future, you know. You can pray and believe and say, and it come to pass in the next few minutes. That's fine. But it might be a few days. It might be a few weeks. There's people that have confessed to believe the Word of God for months. In some cases, years over some things. But it shall come to pass. It will work. It will come to pass in your life. Now, the thing about it is, Saying it is involved in working it. See, let's go back to our original configuration. God said it, I believe it, that settles it. Again, good, good intent, 
but not really necessarily fully scriptural. But God said it, that settles it. I believe it, therefore I speak it, and it comes to pass. That's scriptural. Okay. So we've managed to take our bumper sticker and make it scriptural. <laughs> Even though it's long. But then, you know, when you teach, you get long-winded sometimes. So, that's all right. And actually, as far as tonight's message, we're not going to get terribly long-winded because... I want us to just meditate on this just a bit. If it's important what God says, and it is, that's his word, then it's important that we hear it and study it. Now we hear it when it's preached. That's why over in uh, Romans chapter 10, matter of fact, let's just go over to Romans chapter 10. <clears throat> Romans chapter 10, you remember... That down in verse, uh, oh, let's start in verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call to him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings and good things. But they've not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who's, who hath believed our report? So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Now, they had to hear the word preached. And really, I used to, you know, I mean, there's nothing wrong with this, but I used to listen to the word on cassette tape, thinking, well, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And that's good, but it's really not what it's talking about here. It's talking about preached word. Preached word has anointing on it. When a minister gets up and preaches the word, the Holy Spirit anoints that preacher to preach that word in such a way that faith comes. So it's, it's actually better, and it later on, as time went by, I got to where I listened more to teaching tapes. Yeah, that was back when they had tapes, not MP3s. <laughs> but I listened to the tapes, and as I listened to Brother Copeland, Brother Hagen, Charles Capps, Jerry Savelle, I heard people preaching the word. Faith came for whatever it was they were preaching about. So if they preached on healing, faith came for healing. If they preached on prosperity, faith came for prosperity. So whatever it is you have need of that you need to come to pass in your life, Listen to that. Now, of late, I've been listening very diligently to uh, healing teaching. Okay, and so we have Word of Faith Radio's healing station that plays all night long. I just got it going by the bedside, and it just plays all night long. So in the middle of the night, if I wake up, I'm laying there listening to Brother Hagen or Charles Capps or whoever preaching me about healing. So faith comes for healing because I'm hearing it. So it's important to keep it kind of in its context. We've got to hear the word preached on whatever that subject is that we're believing for. So God said it, that settles it. I believe it. How do I believe it? When I hear it. When I hear the word preached. Therefore, once I believe it, I speak it. Well, once I speak it, I'm speaking it out of the abundance of what's in my heart. Okay? That's really what you're going to speak. There are a lot of people that want to get a hold of their words and they try to control what they say kind of under, uh, by their own power, you might say, by trying to train themselves to speak correctly. Well, the tongue, it says in James chapter 3, can no man tame using his natural ability. But there is a way to tame your tongue, and that's to hear the word and hear the word, and hear the word, build it into your heart, and once it's in there in abundance, that is what will come out of your mouth. If doubt and unbelief is coming out of your mouth, that's what you got in there in abundance. You can kind of check up on yourself and see, where am I at? Well, you know, if I just said that, I must have some work to do <laughs> to get some more word in me. I put the word in me, I hear the word, I believe the word, therefore I speak the word because it comes out of that abundance that's in my heart. And because I'm speaking the word that's in there in abundance, then it's going to 
come to pass in my life. And that coming to pass, now see where people get a little bit out of shape is, they want it to come to pass now. <laughs> oh, Lord, I want it now. I want patience and I want it now. <laughs> you know, well, you've got to believe to receive when you pray and not be worried about the when it shows up. You know, Jerry Smell has a teaching uh, and he talks about the, the, the point between the amen and the there it is. And when you pray and you say amen, the there it is may be down the road a ways. But as far as you're concerned, you have believed that you have received. So if anybody were to ask you, well, Brother Bill, are you healed? Absolutely. I'm healed from the top of my head to the soles of my feet to the tips of my toes. I am the healed of the Lord. Well, you don't look healed. <laughs> you don't sound healed. Well, that doesn't matter. I have believed that I have received. Therefore, it shall come to pass. Now, the shall come to pass, as far as manifesting in the natural, you know, I don't know when that is, necessarily. But again, as far as I'm concerned, I have believed that I have received. Therefore, I shall have. So we've got to keep all this in uh, the proper orientation. Same thing as this original statement. God said it, I believe it, that settles it. That's really out of order. So we've got to keep it in proper orientation. That bit rearranging it a little bit. God said it, that settles it, makes a whole lot more sense, scripturally. And I believe it, well yeah, I do. But once I believe it, I speak it, and it comes to pass in my life. So again, we keep all this in the proper setting, proper orientation, then we see that it does come to pass. And we've all had situations where we believed and have received and had manifestation. And a lot of people, when the manifestation comes, they go, oh, look, you got whatever it was you were believing for. Yeah, but as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> I believe that I received what I prayed. So when it actually shows up, it's kind of a, well, that's nice. You know, I mean, people sometimes get a little uh, bit out of shape with, with you because you'll, they'll, they'll look at you and go, aren't you excited? I mean, you got what you were believing for. You got what you were praying for. Well, yeah, but I believe that I received what I prayed. So as far as I'm concerned, I already had it. The fact that it showed up just means it manifested. Well, it's good that it manifested. I appreciate that it manifested. I thank God that it manifested. But again, I believe that I received what I pray. So again, keeping it all in order, keeping it all in the proper perspective is really how faith works. If you mix it up, then you can find yourself in a situation that you're frustrated in your faith. And a lot of people get frustrated because if they don't see the result immediately, they drop their faith. Well, they didn't believe they received what they prayed, apparently, because they're looking for the result to validate what they prayed. And that's really not what it's about. That's not how it works. So... Keeping it all in perspective, keeping it all in the proper order is really how faith works and how we put it to work. So, like I said, it's not going to make a very uh, uh, cohesive bumper sticker <laughs> or a t-shirt, but it is, as I studied this out, a lesson that I think will minister to us and bless us if we keep it in the right perspective. So, uh, as I said... Fairly short tonight. <laughs> I wanted to keep it concise, even though I extended the, uh, the length of the bumper sticker. I still wanted to keep it concise. <laughs> but, uh, you know, those scriptures, let me give you those again. 2 Timothy 3.16, God said it. Psalm 119.89, that settles it. 1 Thessalonians 2.13, I believe it. 2 Corinthians 4.13, therefore I speak it. And then Mark 11, 22 through 24, and it comes to pass in my life. So we've got it firmly established in Scripture.
which is always the best thing to do if you're going to have a say. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. So did you get anything out of that tonight? I know it was short, but the short-winded shall speak again. <laughs> so that works out pretty well. So uh, we'll close out right there. And uh, let's, let's pray and, and we'll be dismissed. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to have come and preach the word of God and, and just brought, bring these thoughts up and get them in the right perspective so that we can live the life that you want for us, a life of blessing, a life of good, a life, Father, that is uh, everything that you want us to live in this life. You said we would have heaven upon the earth. And that we're to pray, even in the Lord's Prayer, that it be here on earth as it is in heaven. So, Father, we thank you for the opportunity to do that and to study your word concerning that. And we just receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We trust that you were blessed by the word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the giving online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.